Hello! Right, as you can see uh, from the name of the video, this is just a tribute to the ZX Spectrum, which celebrates its 35th birthday today, 23rd of April 1982 it was released. And did we ever think 35 years ago that we'd be sort of where we are now, yakking away at it on YouTube? Um, no, because obviously YouTube didn't exist back then. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to... Um, what I'm going to do with this video is just go through my sort of history with the Spectrum, uh, sort of what it means, etc. Um, to where we are now. I'm going to throw out a few sort of questions um, to you which um, sort of generate some discussion. So that if you feel um, you want to answer any of them, uh, please do in the comments section down below. Now, I have no idea how long this video is going to go uh, on for because I'm just going to open my mouth and uh, waffle and see what comes out, basically. Yes, you're a good dog. Now, stop it. Okay. Right, as you can see, I'm geeking out. I've got the Specky t-shirt and I was, was going to have the Specky cup as well. But, um, mm, yeah, what happened? Um, I'm off work for two weeks now um, over the Easter thing, going down to see my parents, etc. next week uh, for my dad's 70th birthday party. And... Um, I left my Spectrum Cup on my desk at work. I hope it's still there and some thieving bastard hasn't um, nicked it. So I'm going to have to drink out of a plain black cup. You will also notice I've had a haircut and a shave as well. I tend not to do that either of those things when um, I have some time off or do them as infrequently as possible. Um, because I just don't like either of it. But my hair, unfortunately, my jeans don't give me... Um, flowing lock so it gets any longer than two sort of centimeters and I end up uh, with tightly packed curls and I'll just look like a fat Leo Sayer so uh, no one wants to see that staring out of them at YouTube so I've had to do it shave my head off and now it's really cold so the old girl 35 years old today look at it it's still a fantastic fantastic machine isn't it now I've shown you that spectrum before okay now my experiences with it now I didn't get a ZX spectrum until 1984 the first computer we owned was a ZX81 which my parents got me for my 11th birthday in um, 1983 so you can see how sort of far behind the times where they have touched on um, Lots of the things I'm going to mention today in other videos as well, but I'm going to sort of cobble it all together into into this one. So, friends at school um, started getting uh, spectrums, etc., and uh, started to well, me and my brother, we started to feel a little bit sort of like left behind, and badgered our parents um, on and on and on and on and on to let us get one. By the time we um, reached fever pitch in our sort of proper stations. Um, various friends, we'd been round their houses playing um, games etc on their speckies and were just blown away by it. Now the first game I can remember playing on a Spectrum, I'm fairly certain, is Scuba Dive um, from Durrell uh, 1983 and it just blew me away, the animation and stuff etc. I did do a video um, of it um, a few months back now I think it was. Uh, where I sort of like revisited it and sort of shared my um, memories of it and so that is I'm pretty certain the first ever game I played on the Specky and um, that's the first question to you lot out there what is the first game you ever played on a ZX Spectrum doesn't have to have been your own Spectrum could have been before you had one um, what was the games uh, that you played uh, what was the first game you played and what are your memories of it have you played it recently and how does it stack up now now, um, sort of 1984, school summer holidays came round, and we always used to holiday down on the coast in Kent, where my parents actually sort of live now. And the big nearest town to us was Folkestone. And Folkestone had a, I think it was a BHS or a Debenhams, I'm pretty sure it was Debenhams. And in the bottom of uh, the Debenhams section was the um, electronics um, section where all the TVs and all, all that but included that was the bank of sort of home computers um, that were for sale and they ranged from uh, the, the ones that were normal at the time the, uh, that you would, you would have um, expected you had the um, Commodore 64 Spectrum obviously 
uh, BBC Micros. I'm really pulling these out of my head now. I think there was something like in uh, an Electron um, there as well. Uh, not sure about Oryx or um, Dragons. Uh, I don't think so. And I'm not sure the Amstrad had been released. I can't say for definite whether or not the CPC range was, uh, or the first CPC, the 464 was in there. And we'd just gravitate down there. Uh, me and my brother, we'd go down there and we'd mess around um, and that would be our shopping trip. Every sort of shop that sold computers, we'd leave my mum and dad to go and do all the boring stuff and we'd just wander around um, playing on all the different computers and all the different stores. And I got thrown out of the WH Smiths for writing incredibly rude words on their uh, display spectrum and uh, doing the scroll thing, 10 print, uh, big hairy bollocks, 20 go to 10 run, that kind of thing. And I got thrown out. And after I got thrown out, I was wandering around and I met up with my mum and she was just like, uh, oh, okay, come on, we're just, uh, we're going to go back to the car, but I need to go to WH Smith's. And I was like, oh no, mum, no, I can't go in there. Why not? Duh, duh, duh. So I basically convinced her that I was going to have to wait outside because I didn't want to go in. I'd never ever told her the reason why. Now, going back to Debenhams, um, we were wandering around um, down there in, in the below sort of thing. My mum in the sort of basement area, the electrics bit, my mum came and found us and um, told us to um, come away. Um, we couldn't work out why, so we both got a bit sort of narked about that, but in the end we did. And it was like, where's dad? And then we saw dad about 10 minutes later coming up the stairs, carrying a plastic carrier bag behind his back, sort of like not very well hidden. And in that, you could see straight away he bought us. Well, I presume he bought it for us. He never really said. We just kind of nicked it off them anyway if he bought it for himself. A uh, Our first rubber key Spectrum. Together with the Sinclair um, six-pack that came with it. Which, um, I'm going to remind me, I'm going to come back to that very, very shortly. Because I have an exhibit to show you. Um... So we were over the moon, as you can tell. We already had a tape recorder from the ZX81, so um, we couldn't wait to get back. So we had um, those games were the first ones we had. Now, I'm pulling this out of my psyche. That's oh, all right, okay. In that pack was Horisco Skiing, Checkered Flag, Chess, Scrabble. I can't remember what the other two were. Um, so there's a question for you. Anyone remember that um, Sinclair six pack thing? Um, if you can remember what the final two games were, let us know. Um, and here is um, the oldest game in my collection Sinclair Chess by uh, Scion. And that is the actual copy. That's the only existing um, piece of that Sinclair six pack um, thing that I still own, so oldest um, game in my collection with its distinctive silver um, I don't know if that loads, um, I've not tried that as I'm not a chess fan so I'm going to have to have a go at that and uh, and do it so yeah where, do, where did it go from there then, we, we suddenly we were members of the Spectrum Club um, and it was absolutely fantastic um, Every sort of waking hour or spare piece of pocket money was cobbled together um, to buy games. Um, things such as match day, we'd have tournaments um, around our house in my brother's bedroom. Oldest brother always gets the biggest bedroom, what's that all about? Um, with mates we'd do things like we'd try and play um, Jet Set Willy, Manic Miner and stuff like that. All the old classics. Um, and you've seen the way I play games on my videos. I played them exactly the same back then as I do now. I was absolutely atrocious at them, but my brother could do things like get really, really far in Manic Minor, and I could only ever get uh, two or three screens if I, if, if I was lucky. Um, and then we had the various sort of things, you know, where you'd get compilation tapes and stuff um, off your friends and swap them around and stuff. And of course, at school, there was always the playground wars between the Commodore 64 fanboys and the ZX Spectrum fanboys. Now, <laughs> it was incredibly juvenile back then. And, um, you know, back uh, back in the early sort of mid-1980s, um, 
you either insulted someone's mum or you insulted the computer that they had. So um, it just went constantly back and forth between the, the Commodore fans and the Spectrum fans and neither could see um, the benefits of the other machine. Uh, whereas now, you know, Commodore 64 is a really good machine. It's just not something I'm interested in because I never had one. But back then, you know, it was just like, uh, take the piss out of the brown, blocky um, graphics. They'd take the piss out of the colour clash. Um, and it would just get, end up in some sometimes almighty ding dongs over a computer, which, um, you know, looking back now is quite laughable. But is it laughable? It still happens nowadays. And, you know, people are grown up now, um, supposedly. So, another question for you. Do you remember the playground wars? Um, how um, prevalent were they in your school? I did do a video. In a recent pickup, I picked up a copy of Night Shift for the ZX Spectrum. And um, one of the good things about collecting games is not so much the, well, it is, it's the history of it and sort of like bringing back your memories and personal recollections and, you know. Um, but sometimes you find some things in these cases and boxes and stuff that absolutely um, take you right back into the mind of the original person that bought them. Now, I got this copy of Night Shift for the ZX Spectrum and all over, um, the instruction manual is scribbled some incredibly juvenile but incredibly funny because it's so juvenile anti-commodore 64 ranting basically um, go and check that video out if you want to have a laugh it is um, it is quite entertaining and uh, I wonder if the person who owned that copy of the game has ever happened across my video of it and gone oh my god that was uh, me that did that it would be funny if they did so yeah, um, the Spectrum programming, I've never, ever been able to program or understand how to, um, apart from beyond the sort of very basic writing rude stuff on uh, on things, display machines and getting chucked out, which we've all done. Now, my brother, on the other hand, um, did manage to work out... Um, and create a couple of very basic, basic games. But it was something that was way beyond my sort of um, comprehension to do. Now, in one of my um, recent pickups, I've got this book. And I really, really should um, challenge myself to actually read through it. Um, and try a few things. There's a few sort of like program listings and how to do graphics and how to use the rubber key keyboard and all its multi commands, etc. Um, it might as well be written in Japanese for all I sort of uh, know. It's, um, <laughs> it's just, just, yeah, it's supposed to be for beginners. Yeah, right, okay, some things I just don't get. And that's one of them. But I will one day, sort of time and life permitting, you know, because I've got a family now, I've got work and stuff to do. Um, just try a couple of those and, and, you know, see how far I can get, see if I can get any understanding. So, question, did you use to program or were you purely in it for the games as I was? Now, there are an awful lot of people in and around the Facebook groups uh, dedicated to the spectrum that were into the more technical side of things, the programming side, and, um, you know, some people make, made a living from it, making games, as we as we know, and they're still in the industry today. Um, so my question is, what was your experiences of uh, programming? What got you into it? What did you enjoy most about it? Were you a games person, or were you a programmer? You liked to see how the thing worked, what you could get the spectrum to do, or were you a bit of both? Let me know. So, um, overriding memories that come flooding back to me about the, uh, the Spectrum. Um, my favourite game of all time um, that I played uh, in the sort of six or seven years whilst I sort of owned a Spectrum is a bit of a three-way sort of toss-up. It would be Barbarian, Target Renegade, or Xeno from ANF Software, which is a, a really underrated title, and you don't see it mentioned much nowadays, which I think is um, a shame because it's one of the best two-player games um, 
on the system but defining moments from the spectrum um, era for me was I remember I've just done a video on night law I remember um, buying that in uh, Tesco's in Bromley by Bow 1984 again absolutely hounded my parents all the way around the store to let me um, let me get it and was either going to go either two ways I was either going to get a clump or I was going to end up walking out of there with a the game fortunately I ended up walking out with a game in its beautiful cardboard box with its beautiful inlay I hadn't seen any reviews or graphics of it I just got it because I'd heard it was good and I loaded it up and I was like wow this is amazing um, I can still remember my sort of jaw hitting the floor um, when I first sort of saw it and not being any good at it ever but just loving just wandering around and just looking at things and um, that to me was most of the enjoyment of the game now I've revisited hell revisited it lately very recently actually um, for a video in the last week and um, it's actually quite tedious to play now it hasn't aged particularly well gameplay wise but we've got to give um, Night Law credit for its place in um, ZX Spectrum history the first well it wasn't the first sort of game with that sort of isometric inverted commas um, viewpoint but it was certainly the one that made everyone sort of turn around sit up and take notice because it was uh, and still is um, sort of fantastic now they kind of over the put the pudding a bit with the um, isometric stuff in later titles um, but yeah, it's it's worthy of its place. Uh, Chucky Egg. Yeah, used to play that a lot. Same with me with Manic Miner. Um, could never, ever, ever, ever get anywhere apart from about screen three or four um, in that. Uh, yeah. I, have I yes, I have covered Chucky Egg and Chucky Egg 2. Um, I did a dual sort of video um, with them in. Now, what I did with um, Chucky Egg, so it's one of the rare, sorry, Chucky Egg, is it's one of the rare occasions on my channel where there is gameplay relating to a system that is not a ZX Spectrum uh, system. And I include a snippet of me playing the BBC Micro version of that, and that to me is the best version. I've played most of them. But the BBC one just nails it. I mean, the Spectrum version's great, but the, the BBC one is just a, it's just another level, basically. Um, Flight by the Cool Croc... No, sorry, Flight by Repixelate, which was a homebrew ZX Spectrum game that was inspired by a Commodore 64... Sorry, Commodore Amiga game called um, the Cool Croc Twins. Um, I hunted that down on the... Uh, and I got the C64 version because I don't have an Amiga emulator. And I played that and included that in my review of Flight just so that you could see the similarities, etc. And I have a standalone um, review of the BBC version of Match Day. One of my favourite football games on the spectrum is probably one of the worst games on the BBC. It's not, uh, it's not great at all. Um, so those are the only occasions where, um, gameplay-wise, I've, uh, I've featured stuff from other systems. And Christmas 1986... I've got my own um, plus two, which I've shown in uh, videos. The the actual plus two, which has sadly recently gone um, haywire and doesn't work anymore. I will get round eventually at some point to getting that repaired, if I'm allowed. These things I have to negotiate with headquarters, putting business plans and stuff like that. Basically, I have to beg my wife. Can I please do X, Y, Z? Um, yeah, and I, I amassed a uh, massive collection of games. Some good, some great, some not so great, and some downright shit. Um, I think the worst game of all the games I actually bought myself, uh, not through stuff that I've um, picked up recently or played through emulation, the actual worst game I purchased myself, um, Kung Fu Master absolutely woeful game um, everything about it's offensive the, the, the sort of colour clash the sort of collision detection um, <coughs> everything it's just a hideous game and I have done a review of, uh, of that as well and um, 
I took it to took my physical tape to the stables where my daughter was horse riding and I actually put it next to a pile of horse shit um, because to me the two were interchangeable as incredibly juvenile um, right uh, so do, 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 where are we we're up to sort of like 1986 onwards um, when did I sort of so yeah that's um question what's the worst game you ever bought with your own money um, let me know so uh, carried on till round about sort of 1990 91 and then I got a master system and I started playing that and the Spectrum got sort of relegated to packed away in a cardboard box um, with all the games shoved up in the loft and there it stayed I moved out in about 1996 and I thought all my Spectrum stuff had been long lost it was probably about 150 games that I had um, with it and moving through various things until such time as I ended up where I am now when we first moved in we um, we just shoved everything up in the loft and it came to a point about four or five years ago where I had to um, tidy the loft out basically because there was just a load of crap up there so we hired a skip and started going through um, everything and um, deciding what was going to be chucked out and what was going to be kept and I came across this box for an old VHS video recorder and in it was my um, Spectrum Plus 2 and my games, about half of my games, um, possibly even about a third. I couldn't find all the others and I was just like, holy, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. you know, I was like a big kid again. So I thought, that I said, there's no way those are being chucked out. So I put them to one side, I thought there's no way that's going to work, it's been stuck in a box for 20 odd years um, it's been in a loft um, all the damp and stuff like that is going to have messed it right up so I decided a couple of weeks later to just at least try it and when I plugged the power lead in the little red light came on and I was like oh my god oh my god this is great and um, then when I managed to get it plugged into the back of uh, a telly that still had an RF um, port on it it worked. I was. I just could not believe it. I saw. So I thought, there's no way the, ta the, the tapes are going to work. So the very first thing I loaded back up into it, it was staring at me out of the box. Was um, Night Law, you know, with its distinctive orange cover, and it loaded first time. The tape has been, you know, had some problems since, um, but that was, uh, you know, it was amazing. And I, I was, I was hooked again. Now I do have modern consoles, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4 had an Xbox One S um, but lately I've been sort of playing this now where it came um, to a f to the, the sort of level that it is now with me is again I've sort of touched on this um, and where the YouTube channel came from was oh hang on a minute is the battery thing flashing up there no it ain't no oh, fine so I haven't got my glasses on so I can't see half the things on the screen there was around about um, 2014, the middle of 2014, I ended up being walloped with um, a disease called diverticular disease, which is something that affects your colon. Um, and uh, nine times out of ten, you don't know you've got it uh, unless you get infections, um, in which case it becomes diverticulitis, in which case it can be quite serious. And I ended up um, getting a perforated bowel and peritonitis and being in hospital for nine days and off work for five months. Didn't have to have surgery or anything like that. But the recovery was really sort of quite, quite brutal really because I kept on getting infections again, you know, repeated bouts of this diverticular disease, diverticulitis. And I couldn't do much, I couldn't go out, so I decided, well, you know, what can I do? So I just basically started hooking up the spectrum again and sort of um, taking my mind off things um, that way and I really 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 enjoyed it and then I used to look around on YouTube and see that people were um, creating uh, ZX Spectrum games and content, uh, content etc and I decided to have a go at doing it myself now those early videos are absolutely hideous um, they are literally just pointing a phone at the screen um, and playing the games and I have toyed with the idea of, of, of actually getting rid of them um, but then thought no actually I might as well just leave them 
And then this um, diverticulum, I kept on getting repeated bouts of it. And uh, my GP uh, referred me to uh, back to a surgeon who sent me for scans and he said, look, basically, um, you keep on getting um, these recurrent infections uh, every time you get them, your colon is becoming more and more sort of thickened, etc. And it's just going to cause you more issues going forward. It's never going to get any better. You may as well have surgery and have the lot taken out. So they're like, oh, okay. So August last year, um, I went into hospital and I had my sigmoid colon and part of my descending colon removed and all joined back together. But again, I was back in the same situation I was in 2014. I was just sitting, because you can't really do an awful lot, because it was open surgery as well, so I was split from thigh to thigh. Um, yeah, you can't do an awful lot at all, so I was sitting around again, um, and just vegetating, really. So I decided to start doing the videos again, and I, I found that I really, really, really enjoyed it. And then I started collecting, um, and I got the bug, and I'm back to the spectrum now. And I absolutely love it, and I probably play on it more than I do um, any of the other... A, I can't get on the PlayStation, because the kids are always playing Skyrim or something um, similar on it. Um, so I tend to just sort of sit down, I'll pick a game off the shelf, and I'll load it up, um, and I'll play it the way it was meant to be played, um, with varying degrees of success, as you've seen. So, um, that's another question for you. How frequently do you play any of your Spectrum stuff? Do you play it or do you just collect it and have it for show? Um, do you play um, any modern games? If so, which ones? Um, so yeah, that's where we are now. And I never thought, could any of us have thought sort of 35 years ago uh, when we got... Um, when we first got our hands on the Spectrum, could we ever have thought that 35 years later we'd have been talking about it? Um, would we ever have thought that 35 years later people would still be making games for it? Some of which are fantastic and if they'd been released back then you would quite happily have paid money for them. Now I'm talking about games such as Tourmaline, uh, Flight which I've already mentioned, Gravibots, uh, Dreamwalker, Monty and the Temple of Lost Souls, Monty's Honey Run. You'd quite happily have paid money for those um, if they if they were released back then. So the fact that people are still um, in love with this machine programming wise and are quite happy to spend their own time giving us, because they're doing it for us, um, games for free basically. Um, is is brilliant you know and I take my hat off to every single person that's um, that's ever created a game um, because it's uh, it, a modern game because it's um, it's utterly fantastic so the final question I'm going to ask is uh, one that I asked in one of the Facebook groups recently what happens to the spectrum when we're gone when you and I um, have shuffled off this mortal coil and the very last person who actually physically remembers the spectrum uh, is no more you know who takes an interest in it then who looks after its memory etc apart from a very small band of retro um, collectors who who would do that I don't know um, it would be a shame for it to pass into um, obscurity um, bearing in mind that its reputation is coming back with uh, retro projects such as the uh, sorry with um, futuristic projects such as the ZX Spectrum next um, but just wonder you know is there going to be a point in the future where it just sits there and uh, it, and is forgotten about again it would be incredibly sad if that does happen because and the reason I ask that is because my kids have no interest in it whatsoever and um, well, as my eldest girl occasionally um, likes to play Bubble Bobble because it's a nice, simple sort of design. Um, and she's autistic, so the ease of the controls um, 
helps with her sort of like physical coordination um, issues that she has, etc. Uh, but my youngest just it, she has no interest in it at all. She thinks it's something out of like caveman times. So yeah, there's a question for you. If you have kids, um, do they uh, play them? Uh, play the games? Are they interested in them, etc. Because there have been a few people putting pictures on. Um, Facebook etc of their youngsters having a go at a few having a bash at a few games and I think that's brilliant anyway how long have I rabbited on for I can't tell you um, because there's no timer thing on the screen that I've got sort of twisted sort of that way but there's just a few sort of like reminiscences and a, a sort of happy birthday to the ZX Spectrum you know it's a fantastic machine it always will be I'm never going to get rid of uh, the collection if I can add to it at various points um, in the future I will um, thanks if you've got to this far in the video then I applaud you because you clearly there is nothing else on telly to watch um, <laughs> or you just go, intrigued to see what inane what do I come out with next but thanks ever so much if you if for watching um, please 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 share your experiences um, in relation to the points that I've raised in the video um, down below the discussion that the, that um, takes place on the channel is is fantastic I, I really really do appreciate it if you like the video please let me know if you wish to subscribe please do so if you are going to subscribe as I always say then please 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 um, join in the discussions etc because that's what it's all about we're sharing our memories not just me sharing mine you know you I, I like when people um, reply back and you know say well in relation to that game I didn't like it that much etc but blah 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 do you remember this and I've had some wonderful discussions so um, also check out um, the channels that are listed in my some good channels here playlist um, they're all incredibly um, good and worthwhile um, following some of them are spectrum dedicated um, others do focus on content from other systems but they do feature a very healthy mix of um, ZX Spectrum stuff in there as well. If you like what you see from them, please make sure that you support them, give them a leg up and subscribe to them as well. Right, no idea how long this has gone on for, so I am going to say goodbye. Thank you ever so much, and we'll see you when she's 40. That's a Dido song, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.